sorry I've not been um, uploading for ages and I just wanted to come and come on and do like a little pre-run um, before you see the upload because this is from I'm trying to think possibly about three months ago when I filmed it and to be honest there's been no sewing since then um, I've been incredibly busy and I will come on and tell you exactly what's been going on but I just kind of wanted to just put this on first because I as I'm editing, I'm, I'm sort of feeling that the upload's a bit flat and I want you to know that I'm actually all right. In fact, I'm possibly better than I have been in a long time. It's really surprising what difference a few months can make in terms of life. So I just wanted to come on and just let you know I was all right. And also apologise for not being able to respond to comments. I've been locked out of my YouTube account for absolutely ages um so i uploaded last time and then i could see people started to um comment on my last upload and then when i went in to respond to them i couldn't get in i couldn't access my own accounts so i've been able to get onto youtube but not via my own account um and i pay like um premium it's like what used to be youtube red so there's been an issue with my account for quite a few weeks now so i will get on and um reply to all of your comments from last time. So I'll let you now watch the video, but I just wanted to say hi. I'll catch you soon, bye. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you can see me okay. It's really bright here. So we're across on the East Coast and we've had a very lazy Sunday morning. So it's about half past 11. So what I thought I'd do today is just generally spend the day with you. Obviously, I'm gonna do a little bit of stitching. I'm gonna spend significant amount of chunk of the day doing it which is something I haven't done for quite a while so I'm looking forward to that oh you're moving um <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and, and obviously give you regular updates and obviously share the day as it unfolds with you and um hopefully you'll get to spend a bit of time with me and I can update you in terms of what's been going on in my in my crazy life at the minute I was mentioning a little bit about the fact that obviously I've been MIA for quite a while um, and not uploading anything and it's not intentional by any stretch of the imagination but I've just not been um, in in the right space to do it and, and there's been many many reasons for that which I will share with you without the course of, throughout the course of the day um, and obviously the biggest thing or one of the big things really pertains to Daisy. Daisy come across I'll try and grab her. So I mentioned in my update video when I showed you my stitching a little while back about Daisy not being very well and we've had really bad few months with her to be honest and and still she's doing very very well but I'm not at the point where I'm 100% sure if she's going to be okay um, so I'll, I'll sort of rewind to the back end of November last year and we were actually over here at the van just having a few days before the winter came and I, she's gone again, she's too warm and I didn't think I'd be able to spend too much time here. So I came over to really sort of shut it down and sort of drain it off and, and sort of winterise it in a way. So I took Daisy on a, a walk and we have like a bit of a route. We've got a farmer's, a farm sort of over the way from us and there's like a, a nice walk around the field and it's only about a mile and a half long it's not that long really and Daisy doesn't particularly like to walk um, so <laughs> she's incredibly lazy so we were walking across the top of the cliff edge um, to bring us back onto the farmer's path and she has a horrible habit of jumping up at my, the back of my legs because she doesn't want to go she doesn't want to do it so she's jumping up at the back of my legs and anyway she landed really awkwardly and sort of went down and laid there for a bit and I think this is what caused the problem and I will I will share some of her scan pictures with you and then she was very very miserable walking back didn't want to jump up or really do very much so I was backwards and forwards to the vets quite a bit with her because I thought she'd hurt a leg I thought she'd pulled her back leg it was something to do with this jump that had affected her back legs and they did all sorts of tests they x-rayed her 
put her on medication and she still wasn't really doing very well. Now this would be early December because I know this because my Christmas decorations were all up. So you're talking sort of first week of December, second week of December when all of the drama started to kick off. So the next thing is she's still not doing very well. She's on painkillers from the vets which seem to be doing okay but she's still not wanting to jump i'm having to carry her around the house which isn't which isn't great and then um i wake up one morning and she's fecally incontinent and obviously she's lost control of her bowels now in my previous job i worked with spine surgeons and i know quite a bit about the spine and spinal surgery and obviously the conditions that lead to needing uh, spinal surgery and I'm thinking my god like this is a classic sign and symptom of something that they call cord or equina syndrome and it's basically when you've had a disc that's slipped in essence so it's like come out of the disc space it's extruded and it's pressing on one of the nerves and obviously it's the nerve that generally controls all of the functions of the lower half of your body um, and I'm thinking to myself, this is definitely called Requina Syndrome. So I called my local vet and she was referred to a specialist centre to a, a neurosurgeon. So this was, I'm trying to think, probably about the 17th of December, I want to say, when we finally got her to the neurosurgeons. So they took her in um, and they scanned her. And I'll put an, the photo of her scanning for you. So you can see her MRI scan on the screen and there's like um just to draw your attention to like you'll see like a really white area so this is like daisy literally cut in half from the middle and it's sort of coming out to the left side which is what seemed to be the more symptomatic side for her and you can see like this white hot spot um now the vet still isn't sure what this is because i can link it to a uh, what I would consider a traumatic event for her with this jump and then her sort of going down onto the floor and laying there we think it's a disc extrusion and nothing sinister because the alternative is a, a tumour of the nerve root and I don't think it's that, I mean I don't want to believe it's that at all um, so she was on an absolute cracking ton of painkillers all the way through up until I want to say about three weeks ago when I finally got her off all of the meds so we saw the neurosurgeon again and we began to wean her off all of the medication so she was on uh, gabapentin and some doggy anti-inflammatory drug and I've been on a gabapentin when my back was bad and it's um it, it's quite something so she's been very sedate very flat not Daisy because Daisy's just an absolute live wire and full of it um but she's perked right up because obviously all of the painkillers are gone. She's walking well. I'm gradually building up her walking tolerance. Her back sounds like oh, it, it sort of crunches and grates when she moves um, and stretches. It's it, it's horrible. So I don't know what the long term implications of this are going to be for Daisy. And what can you hear the birds? They're going nuts. I've moved them out of the room. They can hear me talking. <laughs> They're going nuts. <laughs> um, I don't know what the long term implications of this are going to be for her um, but she's off the meds, she's doing well, she's moving freely so that was really kind of three, four months of stress with her because I mean, we all know what we're like about our pets um, there's a lot of people who follow me here who are a real pet lovers you know whether it's whatever it is cats dogs whatever you've got obviously i have birds as well you know we we love our pets don't we and you know they are members of our family i mean daisy is my child because i don't have kids and oh honestly just going through the ringer with them you know what it's like i mean i've been there i've lost two dogs before and oh god the just the stress and anxiety that goes with it so that on its own was was bad enough but obviously that hasn't been the only um sort of confounding factors 
that are linked but but obviously I don't want to sit here and do a woe is me <laughs> session we can do that throughout the day because I've got a lot to tell you I've got a lot of woe is me um I, I have to say I, I don't know whether I've already said it because I've got on the right ramble um it's been I I think it, it's up there with one of the most challenging periods of my life I have to say on it on every front you know when you just keep getting smacked in the face by the universe and it's like for god's sake give me a break like i i hear you loud and clear i need to sort myself out but please stop hitting me and and, and giving me things um and and putting barriers in my way there's there's just so much right now and and, and surely i i have to have had like all of my karma or whatever it is that i'm getting thrown at me i hope i hope it, this is everything um but you, you know in the grand scheme of things as we progress throughout the day you know loved ones are safe um they're doing okay um although i have had health issues which i'll talk to you about later um i'm okay i'm doing all right um i feel like there's options and i'm on the mend so to speak so yeah i'm I'm all right, so I have to keep remembering that. But what I thought I'd do now before I set up all of the stitching is take Daisy out for a week. She hasn't done a poo this morning. I am very conscious of that. She didn't do one on our wee wee room this morning. So I'm going to take her out. I'll take you with us. It's a beautiful day here. Um, very, very windy, but beautiful blue sky. Um, it's nice, really nice. So yeah, let me go and grab my phone and we'll, we'll have a wander out. I'll see you in a bit. back oh my flipping goodness it, it's it's so unbelievably windy so Daisy just had a treat mission accomplished isn't it it was indeed so I'm gonna set up the sewing now and come back to you but uh yeah you weren't going on the beach were you there was no chance of that Daisy doesn't walk on the beach unfortunately she's the only dog I know who doesn't like it um but I will later I'm definitely going down there when the tide goes out to have a bit of a a bit of a wonder and a bit of a blow. Uh, I could do with a few cobwebs being blown off. So I'm going to set up the stitching and then I'll come back and show you what the plans are with it for the rest of the day. I'll see you in a minute. So there we are. I am all set up. So I'm going to work on Autumn at Hawker and Hollow today. So I'm on this block seven here, which is the little barn with the with the brooklet so that's what that block will look like when it's done it's not loads to do but you know how these often take a lot of time so i was clearly working on this tree when i last left it so obviously i'm going to pick up there and then just see how far i get today you know it's going to depend on how my neck does because obviously this is something i'll tell you about later um my back but obviously i'm going to take regular breaks and not sit here for hours on end i am watching game of thrones so that's just started um i think this is episode six of season one um i started it last time i was over here so i'm gonna crack on with that maybe watch the best part of an episode i think see how i do and then it'll be getting near lunchtime so i will come back and show you my update then here we go i've been going for an hour um it is now 1 30 so reasonable progress this um thread that i'm working on it's lovely uh what is it let me just grab the packet for you um it is rusty amber from the thread thread gatherer um so it's a lovely really nice variegated thread so i think it's about time for a bit of lunch so the wind has dropped ever so slightly um not by much but a little bit it's still whippy but the tide's starting to go out a bit so i'm going to get a bite to eat i think and then um 
I think I'm going to have a walk on the beach. I think I'll take you with me. I won't be able to talk to you much down there because I don't know whether you can see, but it's still really, really choppy. So Daisy is... <laughs> Are you wagging? <laughs> did you hear your name? You did, didn't you? Yes, you did. You certainly did. So, uh, yeah, she's probably going to have a bit of massage with me, I would imagine. So I'm going to get some lunch and then um, we'll go and have a walk on the beach. There we are. Just brought you back to the spot where we were earlier. We get really bad coastal erosion here in the UK. Um, I hope you can hear me over the wind. Um, and obviously we've had a lot of storms, uh, really bad wind storms. So the path that we would normally have taken to get to the beach previously, it's, it's just literally fallen away. You can see the gate we used to go through and it's literally gone off the edge of the cliff. So they've had to open up um, another route down to the beach. <laughs> I wish I brought a hat. I can barely see. Luckily I'm on the way back now and the wind's behind me, which is helping to give me a good push. Right, I'm back and I brush my hair. Oh my god. I don't think I feel, I feel as though I've got any skin left on my face. That was, was pretty wild. Um, so I'm going to make a coffee and then I'm going to sit down for an hour or so and see if I can get this tree finished and then I'll come back and I'll see you then. There we go. I stitched for about, it was literally just slightly over an hour and I managed to get the tree finished finally. So I'm going to make a cuppa, feed Daisy, and then um, I'll come back and have another chat with you. And then I will pick up in a, in a little while. I want to get these like pumpkin stems on and there's the path to stitch. And I think there's a couple more fish you can just about see here. I want to get this section finished. It's going to be a little bit bitty. And then there's like a, a bit of fancy sort of zigzaggy stuff down here and then the block's almost done so um yeah it's coming together i'm pleased with the progress so i've just made a peppermint and licorice tea if you live in the uk i don't know whether they do these elsewhere these are proper tea bags um and i have to say the peppermint and licorice one is absolutely amazing so daisy's just been fed here she is hang on let me move that before she uh jumps on me there we are are you going to sit with me while I talk to the guys? Yes, she is. Look, is that nice? Oh, your ears are wet. You've obviously had them in the water. That's the problem with a doggy with long ears. <laughs> anyway. Um, yes, so obviously I've updated you on Daisy earlier. And um, yeah, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what's been going on with me. Sorry, I just went and chucked the birds out. They were um, quite animated between the two of themselves. So uh, yeah, no, I thought I'd um, I'd go and get rid of them. So now I've got a, a pigeon on my roof chirping away, doing this. Woo -woo -woo. You might be able to hear it, but anyway, they're quite calming, I guess. Um, so the first thing, and it's not like a major event. It's it's impacted many people. I came into the new year with COVID, so I picked it up. Oh gosh, in between Christmas and New Year, like very many people did and I was um, confirmed with a, a proper test, I've forgotten the name of them now, obviously I was doing the lateral floor test which were positive, then I got a proper diagnostic test and um, yeah on New Year's Day I was um, confirmed as being Covid positive and oh, it was it was nasty, it, it was particularly nasty and I was laid up for two weeks, um, you know I know many people don't really get any symptoms and are, and are okay but it, it literally floored me and I think I was just probably tired anyway and a bit run down um, but oh gosh it really did um, it did knock me for six and then I guess after that um, it's just gradually starting to pick up and, and feel a little bit better and then the other thing that I'm still going to have to be tested for, but in, in essence, I, I guess it was the biggest thing um, overall was, I'm trying to think when it was now, where are we? We're towards the back end of April. It would have been the end of January, early February. I found a lump in my breast and just sort of, I kind of sat on it, not my boob, but like the whole thing for 
a couple of weeks and you know when you sort of think it might go away and you know perhaps I didn't find anything and there wasn't really anything there and I, I don't know I suppose it's classic bury your head in the sand scenario I had and I, I don't know it's just it's just one of those you never know how you'll respond and you'll react until something like that happens and I know people say the minute you find it you should go and I know I know um, and I, I did eventually get myself to the GP because I just thought you know life's too short and what if it is something um, and they examined me my GP examined me and referred me to the breast um, service which is, is at our local hospital where they do the plethora of tests so I had to wait a couple of weeks to be able to go in and um, and have the tests and oh you, you as I said you wonder how you'll feel um, sort of during that time you, you, gosh I mean you sort of think back to the ride I did the year before and obviously that played on my mind quite a lot as well because obviously I was riding for people with cancer all different types of cancer and obviously there was the video I played as part of one of my uploads I did for you where the person's you know is diagnosed and obviously the impact on his life and obviously luckily I never got a diagnosis but you sort of wonder what what would happen how you know what would, what would it be like to actually get that because it it then had become a bit of a possibility that that might be the case and you try not to let it worry you and stress you out because what's the point of worrying about something until you know for sure that it is something. I'm a big believer in controlling what you can control probably until that point. And you know, by no means did I lose my head about it, but it, it's one of those things that sort of does eat away and is constantly on your mind and, and doesn't really go at all. So it would have been, well I remember the date, it was the 25th of February when I went for the tests at the local hospital and they did, um, they did a mammogram and an ultrasound and um, a physical examination and said they didn't think it was anything particularly sinister they thought it was most likely to be a cyst and nothing more than that which was which was fine um but that they would probably follow me up in maybe three to four months time depending so obviously discharged home and then the letter went to the gp so i'm thinking to myself well they would not have discharged me if they thought it was something there's no way they'd let me walk out of a clinic would they if um if there was something potentially wrong and that and, and i still hold true to that I, I genuinely don't believe it but my gp was not satisfied at all so obviously um i then get a phone call because i got a copy of the letter so i know he and knew he'd received the letter anyway i get a phone call from my gp literally the day after the letter landed saying look i'm really not happy about this um i want them to do a, a biopsy or at least drain what's there and test it test the cells um so i was like okay <laughs> if that's if that's what you think I should do he just said look he said I'm just not genuinely happy that you've been sent away without all of the diagnostic tests being done at least he said you know it's not it wouldn't be right if I didn't do due diligence and sort of push to have the biopsy done so a couple of weeks later I was I was back in there having the biopsy um, the needle biopsy to check um, the cells and a few days later I got the results back and it 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 is what well they do think it's a cyst um, there is cellular change there which is not I guess a massive surprise because if you've got a cyst then it's something a little bit different isn't it it's not the same tissue as normal healthy breast tissue um, but I've been put on the watch list and it means that I have to go and have a mammogram and an ultrasound every year and I guess really you know obviously my age um, you would sort of expect that that should really be the case anyway you know I should I should be on the the, the kind of watch list so yeah so it's it's annual mammograms and um, and ultrasound scans now which is which is fine 
Um, so that seemed to satisfy the GP, but obviously, again, it was another layer of stress and anxiety that was already put on top of sort of walking out of that clinic thinking, well, they think it's this, they've let me go, I must be okay for them to let me walk out the door because they wouldn't let me walk out to literally two weeks later being sitting in the same room thinking, gosh, they let me go and, and now I'm back here. I really hope this isn't something. So this took me to mid-February and yeah, I just I just felt really, and it's not surprising that I'd kind of gone through the ringer a bit. The final thing is the ridiculous amount of migraines that I've been getting and I know that I've shared with you for gosh as many years as I've been uploading on, on YouTube about the fact that I do get quite bad migraines. Well they've got a lot worse um, and more frequent to the point where like I can I can get one free day a week where I'm not feeling not well and going from how I was last year where you know I was training for the ride and I was I felt physically fit I felt I felt quite good um, probably the fittest I've ever felt in my life training for that bike ride uh, to now where I can barely get on the bike is unbelievable and, and I think a lot of it is like back shoulder neck pain that's triggering tension headaches I don't think they're all actually there's pigeons on the roof honestly they're so noisy with the big feet plodding around um I don't think all of it's migraine I think a lot of it's tension headaches because I do suffer with shoulder tension neck pain I've brought my massager with me um, whilst I'm here and this is why I'm doing sort of short stints of the stitching and then moving away from it because I can't sit there and do the hours on end like I used to. It's it's really sad. Um, to be honest, this is the most stitching, and I've only done a couple of hours, that I've done possibly this year in one day because I just can't do it because I then get neck pain, shoulder pain, like upper back pain, and then my head starts to go. Um, so I'm going to have to get back to the doctors with it, it's no good, but I'm, I'm going to try and find other ways and means of trying to manage it before I end up on medication again, because I really don't want to go down that route, so with my job I get like this cover where I can go to either a chiropractor or an osteopath or somebody like that, get massages regularly and claim it back, so I'm going to investigate that type of thing. Um, first, so I've um, I've taken up yoga, and I'm finding that's actually really helping because it's allowing me to stretch out and and it's been really good for stress management as well. Um, and I've been doing sort of a mixture of that and something called restorative yoga as well, where you literally lay, lay there in savasana in various different positions. Um, yeah, just sort of letting your mind go and just being able to switch off slightly at the minute has, has been really really helpful for me I just because of the amount of overwhelm and and stress that everything this year has brought so far um, I feel I feel as though I've really needed it um, so the bike riding really has been quite non-existent the shit started off okay and, and I've, I've not really been able to get on it that much in the last month just because of the heads and the necks and because obviously when you're on a road bike quite far forward um, in terms of your position and the strain that it's putting on my neck and my shoulders which it shouldn't be and if I strengthened my core properly it wouldn't be um, but it's yeah it's just not working out very well and it's quite sad because I joined a local cycling club as well and, and it's and it's been great so I got out with them um, it was either about three or four weeks in a in a row and then I haven't been out with them for about a month so just purely because of the heads I've just not been in a a good place where I could get on the bike and push myself without you know feeling absolutely awful so it's been it's been quite something so I feel I just feel um Oh, there's just, there's just, it, you know, and you, it's just a lot, and then obviously she just rammed it all off um, 
work has just gone it's just gone crazy so I mean I can't I can't really say very much about it um, and I don't know whether I probably will be able to but we'll, we'll see um, as time progresses but obviously I've spoken to you in the past about you know you know you can't you know you've got the gist of what I do and, and what I work for because of what I did last year so obviously Covid had a massive impact because by default our customer base or my team's customer base are healthcare professionals, the NHS, healthcare providers so the ability for them to see us, to interact with us greatly diminished because of the impact and the pressures of Covid on their time but also in the way that we would normally see them so a lot of the work that we were doing was virtual where we would connect over Teams meetings, um, Zoom meetings, rather than rocking up to hospitals and GP surgeries face to face. And then this last year, well this this year, 2022, there's been a couple of quite serious events which have, have, have happened um, that we are literally riding the storm of right now and I don't think wish we had crystal balls but we don't so we don't know what's going to happen as a result of of this for us um, so the need for me to think about what I might do in the future if the worst case scenario comes is is really important right now and, and for me I'm all about trying to control what I can control I can't control all of the external stuff that's happening in and around what I do um, within the organisation but I can control external factors so I can control the amount of money I'm saving just in case I might need it um, if I don't have a job I can control um, other endeavours that I might be looking into obviously you know I'm doing the coaching um, qualifications. I'm doing two at the moment. I'm doing the certificate in life coach and the and the diploma in corporate and performance coaching. So obviously I am pushing through on both of those courses right now and trying to get as much of that completed as I possibly can because it could potentially be an income stream moving forward. And and also another thing that I'm looking into, which I will tell you more about in due course as I get a little bit further along with it but I am quite far in terms of, of what I'm doing um, I have made some investment in terms of what I'm thinking and I'm just in the process of creating setting up organizing what I'm thinking but as I said I will I will let you know because I think no matter what that I need to have um, something else I could do if I the, my industry shrinking it's becoming a much smaller world fewer people bigger jobs and and it was always going to do that but the impact of Covid has sort of um, exacerbated that somewhat and probably brought it forward um, probably three or four five years maybe in terms of the longevity of, of the role and it's and it's been good to me I mean don't get me wrong I've, I've done very well for the last 20 odd years out of the industry I work in I couldn't have been more grateful but everything has like that finite time doesn't it so I'm obviously thinking very carefully about what my future could look like and what I could do for myself as you know if I had to because there might not be this type of industry um, or these types of jobs as they stand moving forwards. I, I just don't know. So uh, as you can see, it's all been changed and a lot of anxiety with that, a lot of stress, concern. So I feel like I've had a triple whammy with Daisy. That in itself would have been enough um, really because you know like she's like my baby sorry um so that in itself would have been enough but like kind of everything else on top of it 
um, it's been, I, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely feel as though I've been dragged through it, um, let's just say, but, but ultimately, and I said this earlier, I think I said this earlier, everybody who I care about and love is well and they're okay and and that's the important thing because it could be a lot worse and for very many people it is and when you look at the issues that I've just talked about it's very first world issue related isn't it and then you kind of have yourself a reality check and you look at what's going on elsewhere in the world and you know that for others life is like their lives have been really tipped on their heads so in comparison I'm still very very lucky and I, and I remember that every day whilst you know the minute I want to get into some form of pity party I, I, I'm able to pull myself back and stop it um, because you just you just have to um, but it's been it's been quite a year like these last um, I think these last four months have probably been the most shitty um, time and compact shitty time as well, I'm sorry to swear, um, that I think I've had um, in many, many years and I'm not saying like life's been smooth sailing but this like, these last four months have been particularly bad but you know it's onwards and it's upwards isn't it but this is kind of why I've been missing somewhat and, and not around as much as I would have liked to have been and obviously the stitching is impacted with the fact that I can't sit at it for long because of my sort of neck, back, headaches um, but also the fact that I'm really concentrating on the other things um, in my life that are outside of work, the coaching and, and, the, and the other thing that I'm looking into setting up so, you know, it's has the knock-on impact, doesn't it? And obviously the stitching's getting the brunt of it. So, you know, there's not going to be reams and reams of stuff to show you, I don't think, um, over the coming months. But at least I thought I could maybe do the vlogs or this type of thing with you where I am keeping connected and we are touching base. So, um, yeah, I hope that wasn't too rambly. <laughs> I'm going to, um, what time are we on? It's almost six o'clock, so I'm going to go back to the stitching for about half an hour, three quarters of an hour, and then I'm going to warm my tea up, my dinner, tea, dinner, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to warm that up because I cooked it last night, so it's dead easy. It's just to go in microwave, have that, and then I'm just going to spend the rest of the evening just stitching and um, periodically catching up with you. So, as I said, I hope that explains a little bit about what's been going on it could be far worse. I am very grateful for where I am right now in the world. Um, but yeah, it's been um, it's been it's been interesting. So uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get back to the stitching. Well, I'm back. It's seven o'clock. There's been no more stitching. My bloody gas bottle has ran out. Um, so I've put it onto the second bottle because it has two on the back, and. It happens every time with my van that when one gas bottle empties the um, the other one doesn't automatically kick in and it sort of depletes the supply through the system and then the guys have to flush it through so I don't know what the hell it does um, so I've got my fire on now um, I've been down to the office and of course like all of the guys have gone home haven't they so this one sales fella said he's gonna come over and have a look he won't bloody come, I don't think he'll come. Um, so now I have no heating and hot water, which is not the biggest problem in the world because I can still manage without it. Um, but it, we're in for a chilly night, unfortunately. I'm just, I'm toying with the idea of going home, but I just can't be bothered to pack up the car and drive home at this point, but I'm so miffed. And then to cap it all, I've got this most horrific smell coming from the bathroom. Sorry. <laughs> And um, I think there's something, I think something's died under my shower. I don't know what it is. That's when I was here about a month ago, Daisy was sniffing around that area a lot. And then the back of the shower sort of recesses into my bedroom. And um, she's very interested in something around there. 
and, and I'm wondering whether or not I've got like a rat or a mouse infestation under the van somewhere so I'm gonna have to have a look at that as well so I'm a bit I'm a bit peed off to be honest so you know when you sort of like do I go home or do I stay but I'm gonna have to stay now so they sort the the gas out at least in the morning because if I come again I'm gonna have to make sure I get here in time to do it so I'm gonna have to stay but it's just sort of taken the edge off the night really so <laughs> oh god it's been an emotional day so it's almost nine o'clock I was just having have to spend the last hour having a mega whinge to my mum and dad about how much I hate this place <laughs> and anyway bless him like about 20 minutes ago the sales guy who I went in to see and who said he would come and who I thought had just buggered off home came um got my gas on showed me there's like a little um valve on the back outside where you need to press it to sort of purge the system through so i now know where that is so moving forward i'll be able to get my gas on if it runs out daisy shush and then um i also obviously i've convinced myself i have a rat and i'm right i think i do have a rat um i went and laid on the, the the grass by the side of the van and sort of laid and had a look and i could see one of the boards underneath the van moving it's really making me cringe and the smell in the bathroom i think it's underneath the shower there's a cavity underneath the shower um it smells like um it's urine do, do you know what i mean i came yesterday and i think i said the back end of the van didn't smell very nice so i clean the bathroom like a, a crazy person yesterday and let the water run through the shower to death in case there was anything sort of in the drain um but uh yeah it's he said the minute he walked in i said you know he came and did that i said there's something else i said i know you can't deal with it now but i think i've got a rat anyway i, I took him into the bathroom so he could say he went oh yeah he said that's um that, that's definitely rat urine isn't it or mouse urine um so what he's done he sort of laid under the van i wouldn't have done it but he sort of put his hand up into the cavity there's like a cavity that's just underneath my shower tray and he thinks that's where it's got in and that's where it's nested or done whatever it would do or it's sort of living in there <laughs> and um he's come and bunged a load of wire wool into it and he said what it'll do it'll either stop it from getting back in if it's gone out <laughs> He just grabbed his little handbag and trotted out for the night. <laughs> oh, he said, it will push the wire wool out. If it feels trapped, it will get out. He said, and we'll know it's definitely in there. That's where it's living. Um, and they're going to call Ecolab, who is obviously their um, rat killer or whatever they are. I don't know. And they'll, they'll bait it and trap it. Um, so, you <laughs> know, just like, oh, God. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm going to have something to eat now. I haven't eaten anything yet because I was that chewed up um, and whingy that I haven't done that. So I'm going to have something to eat and then I'll probably do maybe an hour or so of stitching. I'm sorry, this stitching malarkey hasn't been very productive. But this is just a story of my life, honestly. Like if, if, I, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck, like genuinely. Um, but it looks like the site will get straight onto it, fingers crossed. But um, yeah, I'll catch you in a bit. Hiya, I'm back. It's Monday evening. It's almost eight o'clock. So I've just had something to eat. I have taken Daisy for a really nice walk and done some yoga just to sort of stretch myself out a little bit. So I thought I would come back on and do a bit more stitching before bed. I've obviously worked today. So it's my first day back to work after a week off. So um, it was too bad. It was all right. It's okay. Um, just a few meetings, which I can quite easily do from here anyway. So um, in terms of update, so the the guy who helped me out last night came back this afternoon and sort of had a feel around sort of underneath where he'd, he'd sort of put the wire wool or sort of scouring pads um, last night. And he said they hadn't moved. So... I mean, I don't know what that means. It's either trapped in there um, or it's out, out. But it still, it still stinks awful. So the um, rat 
exterminator or rat team are coming at some point this week so I'm going to hang fire here and work from here until I know exactly what's happening so I will update you when I finally know towards the back end of the week I'll come back on but I thought this evening I'm going to stitch for a couple of hours and pick back up let me um rotate this and, and just pick back up where I left off last night so I was working on these sort of motif things I've actually worked out what they are now they're like um it is a motif you know when you're stitching and you don't really know what you're looking at so I'm going to work on that for a couple of hours before bed because obviously it's work again tomorrow and I need an early night I'm a bit tired um so I'm just going to sit with Daisy oh, I've just shown her and she's licking a bloody bum <laughs> there we are say hi <laughs> Oh goodness! Caught you in your in your worst uh, in your worst position there, didn't we? But uh, yeah, no, I'll come back on in an hour or so and show you where I've got up to. Just thought I'd bob on and give you a little update in terms of where I am. So I got all of the the black MPI silk in there, and now I'm just sort of going around with this sort of brick thread. So it's not an awful lot. So this is literally the bottom of the block. Um, bit of filling in to do with a few different colours. I mean, I'm not going to get it finished tonight, but I'm going to stitch for another hour or so, I think. And then um, I'll come back and show you where I am. But it's it's going quite well. It's, um, yeah, it, it, it's always the case with um, with this one. You know, once, once you sort of get into a routine and a bit of a rhythm with the, the blocks and um, the counting, it sort of passes by really quickly. So, uh, yeah, I'll come on just before I go to bed. I'll see you in a little while. Right, I did another hour, so started to fill in these motifs here, and then this is a backing colour. The rest of it's like a, an ochre, it's really pretty, and then I've just literally got these sort of little four stitches to put in. I'm not sure what colour that is yet, but literally it's a case of filling in these um, sort of triangular areas and then the border will go around the rest of it but that little one wants to go to bed now don't you yeah so we're gonna go because it's work tomorrow isn't it it is and I have to be up early so I will leave it there but I will come on later on in the week when I've got some news um regarding my furry friend <laughs> I'll catch up with you soon later in the week bye